this darkest of times would produce one last great flowering of Flemish art. The work of an Antwerp painter called Peter Paul Rubens, which for me represents both the end and the encapsulation of the whole Flemish tradition. Rubens was the supreme master of a new bold style emerging from the Catholic Counter-Reformation, the Baroque. He spent most of his glittering career traveling Europe at the behest of his seriously impressive client list, painting grand state allegories of power for, among others, the royal families of France and England. At the public level, Rubens had lived out a personal version of the history of the Low Countries, trading with foreign powers, rising from low origins to achieve astonishing wealth. This is his house in Antwerp, the palace of a prince. But if you look behind its facade to the private Rubens, you discover that his most intimate dream was surprisingly humble, touchingly simple. Now, Rubens painted that piercing self-portrait in 1630. He was 53 years old, and on the face of it, he had it all. He'd just been knighted by King Charles I of England. He's the painter to kings, princes, queens, all across Europe. He is the single most powerful and influential artist who has ever lived. And at this point, he does something truly extraordinary. He decides to marry the 16-year-old daughter of a merchant here in Antwerp. She's called Helen Formont. He's completely besotted with her. They'll have five children, and he decides to retreat completely from public life. He writes about it in a letter. He says, I have decided to do myself a kind of violence. I have decided to cut the golden knot of my own ambition. He retreats away from the world, and during his last 10 years, he creates an extraordinary deeply personal body of work, highly idiosyncratic, utterly unique, and yet also, I think, the ultimate expression of a fantasy that had obsessed the imagination of people here in the Low Countries for centuries. Some of those final works are rapturous allegories of marital joy invariably bursting with Rubens's characteristically voluptuous, fleshy bodies. Here we see Rubens himself gazing in adoration at his rosy-cheeked young bride. Everything in Rubens's late paintings seems to speak of desire. No one had ever expressed it more urgently, more carnally. But I think it's essentially that same desire for colour, life, light and blessedness that had always infused the tapestries, illuminated books and paintings of Flanders right from the beginning. But for me, there's one work above all in which he revealed his true low country soul. Painted on an epic, panoramic scale. Rubens's landscape with a rainbow is quite simply one of the greatest landscapes ever painted. Like all of his pictures, it's a cornucopia, a hymn to plenty and abundance. Ripeness is all. Look at those ducks, literal symbol of the fat of the land, clucking and quacking and waggling their feathers and diving into the water. The cows seem to be multiplying before our very eyes and there, as so often in Rubens' art, a real touch of human carnality. There's a milkmaid with her ewer balanced very ingeniously on her head, simultaneously flirting with a peasant and giving us a wink at the same time, her companion flirting with the other peasant the hay wain, as he winds his way into the picture. Constable, who painted the hay wain, loved this work of art. Look at that slab of yet-to-be-cut hay. 
It could almost be a slab of butter. And look at the way the landscape has been laid out before us, almost like a, a fertile body. A windmill sails glittering on the far distance. Even Rubens's sky is abundantly stocked with clouds. It's a dream of peace and a dream of plenty. And I think that Rubens wants us to recognize that it is a dream. Flanders in his day was not a place of utmost peace and prosperity and I think that's why he's included the rainbow an old divine symbol of hope of something that might come to pass in the future I think Rubens himself knows that what he's depicted is a world that does indeed lie beyond the far end of the rainbow a world that he hopes may one day come into being so yes the painting is a beautiful dream but it's also a prophecy because not too far to the north another upstart nation of the low countries the Dutch Republic would be attempting to turn that dream into a reality but that's another story